This part's all about getting more familiar with the interface and the layout of the digital art software. When opening up any new software, the interface can oftentimes be very complicated and confusing at first look, and your brain's trying to wrap itself around trying to understand it right away. And Photoshop is no different. So rather than try to understand it all at once, let's take what we have in front of us, break it down into the five main sections, and try to understand them individually, and then put them together. And all of this is summarized in the interface handout if you want to check out the step-by-step -step written tutorial as well. So to start off, let's get rid of everything we have in front of us, and then we'll bring in each of the five main sections one by one, explaining what each of them are for. So to start us off, we're going to look at the very topmost bar of Photoshop, which is the menu bar. And the menu bar contains an overview of everything that the software has to offer. So if you're unsure of where to find something or look for something, it will most likely be in here. But usually it'll be hidden in like a subcategory, so sometimes you have to search for it. But if you look in the right tab, you're sure to find it. And the two tabs that you really should look into a bit more are the Edit and the Image tab. And they contain most of the essentials for editing, rotating, and mostly adjusting your image. And the Edit tab is usually to edit whatever layer you are currently working on, where the Image tab will edit the entire image itself. So let's say you wanted to flip the image horizontally, you would go to the Image tab, search for Image Rotation, and then flip Canvas horizontally. And the more that you have that memorized on where it will go, the easier it will become to use Photoshop, and eventually you'll probably want that to be even on a keyboard shortcut. But it's still good to know where it came from. So the next menu we're going to take a look at is called the Toolbar. Now you can kind of just think of this as your digital toolbox because it contains all the different tools that you can use for your digital art software. And in Photoshop there are about 20 displayed for you and if you're not sure what each of them are, if you just hover your mouse over it, it'll give you a description of not only what it is but also the keyboard shortcut. And if you click and hold on any given tool, you see how a little submenu will open that displays all tools that are similar to it. And this allows the toolbar from becoming too cluttered and helps stay organized so if you need to find a specific tool, it gives you a better idea of where you might be able to find it. And if you're clicking around on the different tools, you may have noticed that a menu underneath of the menu bar changes for each one specifically. And that leads us to our third main category that we want to cover, which is the tool settings bar. So in Photoshop, every single tool has a unique sub-menu bar that you can go ahead and adjust the settings accordingly. And when you do it, it'll only affect that specific tool. So if you adjust the settings for the brush tool, it won't affect the settings for the, let's say, eraser tool. And this will take some time to kind of get familiar with what settings each individual tool has. But you'll become more familiar with the ones that you're using a lot and you'll become more comfortable with understanding, okay, if I adjust the opacity on this, how will that affect the way it lays out on the canvas? So try not to get frustrated, but rather see it as an opportunity to get more familiar with Photoshop and understanding the different settings it has to offer you. So the largest and most profound menu will be the canvas itself, and you can think of this as your working space. So there's not much that you can add to it besides rulers or deciding what it will tell you on the bottom bar, but just know that this is where you'll be working in and probably staring at most of the time that you're in a digital art software. And you can have more than one canvas open, but just know that the more that you have open, the slower that your computer may run. So try to keep it limited and if possible, try to keep it limited to one canvas at a time. So the last section and arguably probably the most confusing to look at are the floating windows. So these you can think of as individual sub-menus that you decide which ones appear and which ones do not appear. So if you look at the top menu bar, there's a tab called Window, and when you click it, it gives you a list of all the floating windows that you can have displayed. Now only the ones that have a check mark next to them will actually display on your screen. And I think it's important for you guys to know that you can go ahead and stack them and kind of group them together as a whole. So as of now, all my floating windows are stacked together as one single kind of island. But if you want to break them up, all you would do is you would hold on one of the tabs and then drag it out. And you can see how now we have two floating windows because this one is still attached all together. But this one's made up of three different ones. And then if you wanted to, you could even break it down more. And let's say you're running out of space, but you still want this tab to be available. What you could do is you could grab and drag it over the selected window you want it in and once it has that blue highlight you just drop it in 
And now you can see how there's like a tab system, just like the menus on the top. And if you wanted to undo that, you just grab it again and drag it out. And lastly, if you wanted to attach it to the bottom, to the side, to the top, wherever it may be, all you would do is you would grab that tab and then drag it to the side or the bottom until you see that little blue bar appear. And wherever you want it, drop it in and you're done. And that's it. So these are the five different sections of the layout. And then if we can imagine stitching them together, we create that layout of our digital art software. So hopefully this will help you guys kind of break it down and think about, okay, what section am I in? Where would I find this tool? And this is something that you'll acquire more and more as time will go by. So all I can say is keep practicing and keep looking through the different submenus and kind of learning more about what this digital art software has to offer you. And in the next Getting Started tutorial, we're going to take a look at the brush and eraser tool.